So what are pl prostaglandins? Well, they're hormone-like substances that are produced in cells. And they're also known as eicosanoids, and these are formed from arachidonic acid, which is a polyunsaturated fatty acids with 20 carbon atoms. Well, they differ by a substitution of the attached 5-carbon ring. And prostaglandins have many functions, and some of them are lowering and raising blood pressure, as well as stimulating contractions and relaxation, relaxation of the smooth muscle of the uterus. Okay, <clears throat> so when tissues are injure, injured, arachidonic acid is converted into a prostaglandin, and this produces the inflammatory pathway as well as pain in the area. So you can see I'm hammering here, I hit my finger. <laughs> As you know, I broke my finger from the horse, so that's not too far off. Well, we have this arachidonic acid. And the way I remember how to calculate him is he looks like two spider legs. What's the word for spider? Arachnoid. So arachidonic acid kind of looks like spider legs. Well, then what happens is um, normally we'd have this inflammatory pathway come in. But when we have these analgesics like Advil and stuff, it actually stops the pathway here, so that's why it can reduce inflammation, pain, and fever. Okay, but normally without those analgesics, normally it would go on and you'd have um, the prostaglandins, right, which would then trigger pain, fever, and inflammation. So, fun thing non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, such as aspirin, they're going to block the production of prostaglandins by stopping. The um, production of it through um, the conversion of arachidonic acid. So NSAIDs, they block the production of prostaglandins, decreasing pain and inflammation. So like I said, some of these guys look, you can see they have the central ring, and then they differ by um, their side arms, right? So NSAIDs include naproxen, which would be Aleve and uh, naproxen, and then um, ketoprofen, which is Actron, and uh, Nebutene, which is Orlefin. So linking this to why do we care? Well, I told you about those omega fatty acids and how they're really important. Well, omega-6 fatty acids, these are unsaturated fats that are found in vegetable oils and fish, and they're recognized to be more beneficial to health than saturated fats. Vegetables contain omega-6 acids, meaning that the first double bond occurs at the sixth carbon, counting from the methyl end of the carbon chain. So here are a couple examples of um, omega-6, which would be linoleic acid and arachidonic acid. So what you do is you're going to find that carboxylic acid group or the carboxyl group, and then go to the other end, and that would be your omega side. So I would say remember your alphabets. There's an alpha carbon and a beta carbon, and that's on your carboxyl group, so ABC. Then on the other end is going to be your O, okay? And then we count how many carbons we have until that double bond. So here we'd be one, two, three, four, five, six double bond. So this would make it an omega-6 fatty acid. Same down here with arachidonic. A lot of times arachidonic is the hairpin turn, like we just showed earlier, but this one they strained it out. So one, two, three, four, five, six double bond. So that would be your omega-6, okay? Well, what about omega-3s? Fish has high levels of omega-3 acids, which means that the first double bond occurs at that third carbon from the omega end, okay, or the methyl end of the chain. So um, examples of omega-3 acids include the linoleic acid that we talked about before and um, doxyhexanoleic acid, etc. okay? So um, in arteriosclerosis and heart disease, cholesterol forms plaques that adhere to the walls of the blood vessels. Okay, cholesterol sticks, causes problems. Blood pressure rises as blood has to squeeze through the smaller openings in the blood vessels. And the more plaque that forms, there's also a possibility of blood clots that can block the blood flow of the vessels and therefore it can cause a heart attack. So too much cholesterol, too much bad stuff is obviously not good. But omega-3 fatty acids lower the tendency of blood platelets to stick together, therefore reducing the possibility of those blood clots. So that's another reason why the omega-3s are very good. All right, so let's apply this. So label each of the following fatty acids as saturated, monounsaturated, or polyunsaturated. So look up a picture, pause me, and come back. Okay, what'd you guys get? So linoleic acid has more than one double bond, so that would be a polyunsaturated. Polymitic acid only has one double bond, so that would be a monounsaturated, where steric acid has no double bonds, so that would be a saturated fatty acid. Right, great job, you guys.